It's uh, 24 minutes to 8. The ugly issue of racism has once again reared its head in the what's known as the beautiful game of football. Yes, in December, Liverpool's Luis Suarez was given an eight-match ban for making racist comments towards Patrice Evra. John Terry, of course, also due to face trial, as we know, over the summer on charges of racially abusing QPR's Anton Ferdinand, which Terry denies. This has all now reached a point where the Prime Minister has got involved. Well, David Cameron is leading a summit at Downing Street later today on the issue of discrimination in football. And with us now, the former Chelsea defender Paul Elliott, who's turned his tackling skills into campaigning against racism and prejudice. Also with us, Adenike Adenisiri, who is editor of Future Leaders magazine, which encourages ambition among black undergraduates. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, two very well publicized incidents on the pitch in terms of uh, what may or may not have been said. And obviously, one of them is sub judice, so we shan't be discussing that. But. Uh, is the problem of racism in football deeper than that, in your view, Paul? Um, I think, yes, it can be. Uh, and I think certainly we, we have to sort of look back to when I played in and, and got that, what I call the vitriolic abuse in the 70s and the 80s, and seen the emergence of the Professional Footballers Association, that the Kick It Out show excellent leadership, and the FA as well. But I think what's, there's been some wonderful progress, there's no question about that, but we, there's no mood for complacency. And I think you've highlighted you know, the issues, how it's re-emerged. And I think with the same, what I call, level of zero tolerance at the top in terms of application of the law, sanctions, but also at grassroots, education, role models, players have got a very important role to play as well. One of the other issues that David Cameron and Jeremy Hunt are going to be discussing is the fact that there are so few black managers. So while you have about 25% of players are black, only three are managers of a football club. Why don't they go into management, do you think? Um, I think a lot of it is to do with institutionalised racism and it's something that's you know within the footballing industry and it just does prevent black people from getting as far as they could get. There's a lot of there's still a lot of intolerance, still a lot of ignorance, still a lot of prejudice, and it's something that exists in the footballing industry and industries outside as well across the across the country, you which said, is a problem. Right, let me come back to you on that. Is, you think it's really much intolerance on the terraces or in the stadiums these days amongst the crowds? Because mm. do you think so, really? Um, I think that there's. I mean, we've seen some examples, um, you know, earlier this year of um, you know things that have been that have happened in. in in crowds, you know, football crowds, and also things that have happened on the pitch. Yeah, very, very limited number, though, wouldn't you say? That but, but I think that these are the things that you know have been brought to the forefront, you know, in the media and stuff. But it's, I don't think it's by any means something that's that's new. I think it's something that's been happening, you know, over the years. So it, it's a problem that's been ongoing. Well, what stops black players moving into management? Why are well, there so few? If I'm honest, with you, I had personally no desire to go into management. Mm. I thought it was a, a tough, uncompromising business. But I, I, I feel that, you know. Many were concerned about the, the lack of transparency in the, in, the, in the recruitment processes, you know, and, and because when you get to the table, it's about getting to the table. And, and I felt that many black players were disillusioned because they never felt there was going to be equality of opportunity within the recruitment processes. And, but I would always say, first and foremost, you've got to get, you know, you've got to be qualified. I mean, management is a tough, ruthless, uncompromising business. And I think the FA has recognised how inclusion is very important. They've got a number of uh, schemes, a coach scheme, which is going to generate far more greater inclusion for black and minority ethnics. So, I've, But the, the players of my generation certainly never felt the confidence or the belief in the, in, in the recruitment processes, in the interview structures. They never felt they'd have equality of opportunity, mm -hmm. which basically left them disillusioned and, and obviously do things outside of the game. So, and again, is, is it really the case that there is, in, in your view, prejudice at the boardroom level because black applicants are not getting the job or simply they're people back people are not applying to the job because they think they won't get it um, I think it's a mixture of both to be honest and I think that it's again like I said before it's an issue that is across you know wider society and industries you know like you know the banking industry the law industry media um, the publication that I work for um, publication I edit sorry future leaders is a magazine that tries to um, you know, break down that message. Um, another magazine we published, pa um, The Powerless, which sh showcases role models from across the board in all industries, and it's a tool that we use. We, we, we send them to schools to show kids that, you know, they can achieve. And it is a problem in terms of people not actually thinking they can get the jobs, and also, you know, like, you know, um, issues at, in the boardroom as well. So mm -hmm. I think it's a mixture of yes. both. And it, you look at what's happened in America, and I think yes. sort of in about 2003, wasn't it, the NFL yes, brought the, in the Rooney Rule, the Rooney Rule yes. which, which meant that a black 
candidate had to be interviewed yes. for any big job. I mean, I mean Shani, it's a very valid point, and I mean, I see the merits of the Rune Rule. I'm, I'm an advocate of that because, you know, positive discrimination is unlawful in the UK, but positive action isn't. And what the Rune Rule does, it gives the opportunity for those aspiring people to be interviewed. Now, as I, as I realise, you may go there wanting to be a black coach, but you've got to be qualified. As you say, 25% in the game, if the players are black, we've only got three black so managers. So it gets you through the door, so, but, but it doesn't it does, get you the job. Exactly, so you still have the opportunity to go and demonstrate your qualities. And there after you may they may say well okay you've got outstanding qualifications but we may see you as a mm. administrator you know as a as somewhere in the boardroom you know so what it does it provides the other potential pathways to employment which I think is very very important in terms of at the games though, would you agree that since you were a player behavior um, amongst the crowds has improved a lot in other words if you're at a game now and somebody says something racist next to you it's not Bill, tolerated by the fans now, absolutely it? I agree it's an emphatic yes I think there's been tremendous progress you know within our supporters taking greater responsibility we're in a very sort of diverse multicultural multiracial community and that's reflected on the field and off the field but there are greater challenges homophobia and obviously continued hard work and application by the footballing family together collaboratively and that's why the, 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 the event today at Downing Street is very important mm. Thank you both very much. Thank Genuine you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The time is 18 minutes to 8. This is breakfast.